Dear President, dear Roberta, I welcome you today in Cyprus here at the Joint Rescue and Coordination Center on what has turned out to be a very sad day. Early this uh, morning, we have learned the tragic news of the deaths of seven humanitarian aid workers working for World Central Kitchen in Gaza in delivering desperately needed assistance. World Central Kitchen is one of our crucial partners in sending this much needed humanitarian assistance to Gaza and on implementing the Amartya Initiative. I express our sincere condolences to WCK and the countries who lost their citizens, and we call for an immediate and complete investigation of this sad incident. Dear Roberta, it has been six months since your last visit on the island, but even in this short period, the circumstances are now distinctly different. In your previous visit on October 1st, you joined me in celebrating Cyprus Independence Day. Just six days later, a war broke out in the European Union's immediate neighborhood across the sea from Cyprus. And the tragic events of last night prove once again that this is not a regional crisis of limited concern or impact. It affects reverberate across the region and impact Europe in crucial areas such as security and migration. Dear friends, the, tra the tragic events should not discourage us. We must double down on our efforts to provide more assistance as the needs dramatically escalate. We should also not overlook what has been achieved so far and what is possible when we persevere in doing what is right, what is necessary. In this context, I consider it important that the recent European Council we finally adopted conclusions on the Middle East because I truly believe that as a European Union, we should not be mere observers to this crisis. We have a responsibility to act, and we should be an integral part of initiatives together with our partners to put an end in the war and start a political process for a lasting solution based on the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Dear Roberta, your presence here today as President of the European Parliament representing almost 450 million European citizens is a strong message that Europe and its citizens care deeply about the severely deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza, and they stand behind initiatives to alleviate the crisis. With the Amartya Initiative, Cyprus, as the closest EU member state to the Middle East, which has excellent relations with all its neighbors in the region, aims to fulfill its moral obligation to ease the suffering of civilians in Gaza. To this end, we are working closely with our partners, including the United Nations, of course, the European Union, the United States, the United Arab Emirates, and others. Safe delivery and distribution of humanitarian assistance is a must. It is our obligation as international community to scale up our efforts to ensure increased deliveries of much needed aid and underscore in the strongest of terms that humanitarian aid workers must have full protection in conducting their essential efforts in providing food and humanitarian assistance. International humanitarian law is crystal clear as regards respecting and protecting humanitarian aid workers. I want to stress once more that the Amalthea Initiative is not a substitute to other routes, namely the all-important land routes and their drops. It is complementary to them with the sole purpose being to increase the provision of assistance by sea and to mutually reinforce all pathways for sustained delivery of humanitarian assistance to those in need. We have already dispatched the first two shipments with hundreds of tons of aid directly to Gaza through close partnership with the United Arab Emirates. Furthermore, in cooperation with partners and stakeholders, we are working on rendering the provision of humanitarian aid to Gaza more stable and predictable. 
We also started working on the funding modalities of the, of the maritime corridor by activating the Amalthea Fund. I would also like to refer to the U.S. government's decision to establish a maritime pier of the coast of Gaza, which will be operational very soon, that will allow for a significantly scale-up flow of assistance. Dear friends, with, the, with President Metzola, we had the opportunity last night to also discuss other issues of common concern. As always, I brief Roberta on our continued efforts to resume negotiations on the Cyprus problem, including my recent meeting with the UN Secretary General in Brussels. We will have another European Council in two weeks where EU-Turkey relations will be discussed. We are ready for progress on this file in a step-by-step -step approach, provided that Turkey engage constructively on all aspects of EU-Turkey relations including, of course, the Cyprus problem and the resumption of talks based on the UN Security Council resolutions, which is an essential component of the relationship between Brussels and Ankara. We also exchange views on migration. Here at the JRCC, we monitor all sea traffic in and out of Cyprus. The number of Syrian migrants coming from Lebanon has been consistently increasing in recent weeks which is deeply concerning. I fully understand the challenges Lebanon is facing, but exporting migrants to Cyprus should not be the answer and cannot be accepted. Towards that end, the European Union should also stand by Cyprus in tangible ways. Finally, with the President, we exchange views on the upcoming June European elections. I warmly welcome Roberta's initiative to visit member states in order to motivate people, especially uh, Europe's youth, to vote. Increase youth participation to the election is a shared goal and a, and, and a point I have been consistently making, including at the panel discussion with Cypriot youth last month and in my speech to students at the College of Europe in Bruges two weeks ago. This year, when in Cyprus we celebrate the 20th anniversary of our EU accession, increased interest and participation to the European election is a timely test for all of us and a personal bet for me, and we must rise to the occasion. I take also today's opportunity to wish Roberta every success on her own candidacy for the elections, as I firmly believe that she has done an excellent job and has been an exemplary president of the European Parliament. Dear Roberta, once again, it is a great pleasure to host you and your team in to Cyprus. The European Parliament support on all issues we discussed, but especially on the Cyprus problem and the Amalthe initiative is extremely important, and it is greatly appreciated. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, dear President. Thank you for your warm welcome in a nation where I always feel at home. Cyprus is uh, Europe's primary gateway uh, to the Middle East, Asia and Africa. And as we can see today, it is also the departure point for the critical Amalthea initiative. What happens here is a precise translation of our European values, solidarity, peace, united in our defense of our common humanity. The situation on the ground remains desperate. Too many innocent people have died just this morning. As the President said, we woke up to the tragic news of more aid workers killed. We must use all our resources to get answers, to get, bring in more relief. Humanitarian organizations like World Central Kitchen must be protected. Dear Nikos, we welcome the Amalthea Initiative, and we very much appreciate your leadership and your personal commitment to make this tangible success a reality. Our approach is to get more help into Gaza, save innocent lives, and advance the need for a two-state solution that gives Palestinians a true perspective while giving Israel security. The European Parliament will keep pushing, as we have been doing for months, for a ceasefire. We will keep seeking the return of the remaining hostages. 
We will continue to emphasize that there can be no prospect of peace, security, stability, and prosperity for Gaza as long as Hamas operates with impunity. We will continue to advocate for a settlement that empowers peaceful, legitimate Palestinian leadership and one that ensures lasting stability in the region. I think this is just one example of the leadership Europe and the world has seen from Cyprus. And it proves the point that in Europe we know no big and small countries. Leadership and ideas do not depend on geography. And Cyprus proves this every day here and particularly through its members of the European Parliament uh, in, uh, in the Parliament. On the Cyprus problem, dear President, let me reassure you and reiterate that you have the full support of the European Parliament to find a way forward under the UN plan and your personal commitment and leadership on this is very much appreciated. On migration, next week we have a um, big unprecedented legislative package that will hopefully go through the European Parliament that was asked from us, from citizens, including from Cyprus, in 2019, when we ran for the last European elections. With this legislative package, we will be able to answer both in the short and medium term, but also, hopefully, in the longer term, the individual national challenges that countries such as yours are facing with regards to migration. We are two months away from the European Parliament elections. My appeal, this is the reason why I'm also here, is that your vote, your voice matters. Do not let anyone else decide for you. This election is way too important for that. The next few years will be decisive for Europe and for both sides of our Mediterranean. And I'm confident that European citizens in Cyprus and every member state will respond. So, dear President, dear Nikos, thank you again for Cyprus's leadership and thank you for keeping Europe's values at heart. Thank you. Thank you. Can we? They decided to pause their actions in Gaza Strip as well and through the maritime corridor. Is it too soon to speak for a third mission? Is the whole initiative in, um, in pause as such uh, because of the tra tragic events in Gaza? We're in contact with the WCK. The humanitarian needs are there, and the Amalfi Initiative will continue. And uh, as I mentioned before, we are also in contact with um, uh, the United States. As it is very well known, they prepared the, a pier in Gaza. And I think uh, before the end of the uh, month, we will be in a position to speak have more humanitarian assistance sent to Gaza. We have this unfortunate incident. It's something that, uh, uh, let me express again, the consequences of the Republic of Cyprus, but the Amalfi Initiative will continue as the humanitarian needs are there. Madam, uh, uh, how will the European Parliament respond to the, today's tragic events? Shouldn't there be more decisive actions towards protecting uh, humanitarian aid workers and people on the ground? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we will convene uh, as a plenary next, uh, in the next few days. Uh, you will recall that the European Parliament has, since the very beginning of the conflict, uh, not shied away from being the first institution to call for a ceasefire. Uh, to call for the return of all hostages with great concern for the number of innocent lives that have been lost, and today's latest tragedy being uh, an addition to the grave concern that we continue to shine a spotlight on. We have also been in contact with the journalists on the ground. Uh, in my talks uh, with the United Nations Secretary General uh, the week before last, uh, this centered around how we as a European Parliament can continue uh, to call not only with language, but also in pushing our country's leadership in order to speak to all the actors in the region in order for there to be a ceasefire. The hostilities must stop. 
uh, this is this what happened today is just the last installment of yet another tragedy that can only increase as the days go by the situation is extremely desperate thank you